Good morning, everyone. Today is May 10th, 2023. Yesterday, after my time with Father in prayer and study before I started my work day, he led me to create this image. And he gives me the image that I go looking for on the internet. <laughs> he, he puts this image in my mind of what he wants me to use. And then when I go searching for it on the internet, I find the exact image that he wants me to use. And so I created this message yesterday, and it was actually in preparation for my use today in a conversation with someone <clears throat> that I've been in fellowship with, not close fellowship, but someone I've known in fellowship, in a conversation that was public on social media today. And um, this person basically did a video message stating that there's a lot of division among quote-unquote believers regarding the name of our Creator and His Son, and that <clears throat> there's a lot of fighting back and forth about um, His true name, or the false pagan names of God and Lord and Jesus Christ. A lot of mixture going on, trying to use the name of Jesus and Yahusha in the same breath when they're totally different things, totally different identities and entities. You cannot mix. And that's lukewarm. It's basically, it's lukewarm. You're trying to have one foot on either side that's compromising, lukewarm, compromising, <clears throat> not fully in or fully out. And what does Yahushua say about those who are lukewarm in the book of Revelation? He will spew them out of his mouth. Before I came to the understanding of who Jesus Christ really was, the image of the beast that was given life, by the false prophet and false apostle, 13th apostle, Saul known as Paul. I didn't understand this passage very well. Matthew 7, 21 through 23, always, I'm like, why? How, how does that even work? Because in that passage, we see that Yahushua says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, and yes, I left Lord, Lord in there on purpose. Because Lord refers to Satan, and yet those who are too blind or too ignorant or too willful to think that, he can, that they can call the Creator and the Messiah whatever they want, and they're going to invoke His name and His power, no. So I left Lord, Lord in there on purpose, because that's what people call Him, and that is not His title, and that is not His name, and that is not His power. So not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we, <laughs> didn't we prophesy in your name? Drive out demons in your name? Come out in the name of Jesus! You know, you know that movement going on right now. The false deliverant ministries and, and faith healers all over the place. <clears throat> many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name, drive out demons in your name, and do many miracles in your name? Then I will announce to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you lawbreakers. Okay? His name is not Lord. It's not Jesus or Christ. Yes, Christ means anointed, just as Messiah does. But <laughs> guess what? It's the other side of the coin. Satan counterfeits everything. The Messiah, his name is Yahusha Hamashiach. He doesn't know you because you don't know his name. You do not keep his laws, John 14 and 15. He does not know you. Yes, there are quote-unquote miracles that can be done through the power of Satan. Don't forget the story of when Moses went to Pharaoh in Egypt. <laughs> he had his big staff 
thrown on the ground, turned into a snake, eat up the other two staffs of the magicians, the sorcerers of Pharaoh, who turned their staffs into snakes as well. Through what power would that be? Hmm, Satan's. But yet at the same time, Moses' serpent staff devoured both of the false power. Light always wins. Light and truth always wins. So yes, there are many things that look miraculous being done in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. Oh my goodness. Jesus is going to heal you. He's going to give you all you want. All this prosperity, peace, and power. Guess what? People who go to these things don't get a lasting peace. They don't get lasting deliverance. They don't get lasting healing. They don't. It comes back. They get tormented over and over again. Guess why? Because Satan is just like a cat toying with the mouse before he kills it. That's why. That's why. That's why Yahushua says, I never knew you. Because you don't even know his name, let alone his law. You don't love him enough to listen to him knock, knock on your door. You don't open to him. And I'm going to point that out right here. It's really interesting how as soon as I understood more about the golden ratio, all of a sudden I'm seeing it everywhere. And look at this image that Father gave me this morning to add to this message. Look at the golden racial spiral all over this door, over the red door, <laughs> Yahusha's blood. Guys. Time is getting short. And yes, you can hear I'm really passionate about this. But today, my goodness, this person who stood up there and he said, I was saved under the name of Jesus and I will never deny it. I will never deny it. And then he goes on to admit, oh, but Jesus isn't really accurate. The name Jesus isn't really an accurate translation, but I'll never deny the name of Jesus. How can you be so double minded? How can you be so double-minded? There is only one name, Acts 4.12. There is only one name under heaven whereby you can receive salvation. And no one on this earth is quote-unquote saved in the flesh. Eternal life and salvation is a reward once you are in the presence of the Almighty, Yahuwah Elohim, to receive your judgment. And if you are judged righteous and worthy and you are following and obeying his commandments, he will give you eternal life and salvation. But no one is saved here. There's no finish line here. If you've been judged, that's when you receive it, if you're worthy. But the thing is, we have been born into lies from infancy. It doesn't matter if you were born in Africa, born a Muslim, born Christian, born Mormon, born anything. We're all born into lies. From the moment we were born, we were born into slavery. But he knocks on our door. And when we hear the knock, that's a question. His knocking are questions. If you have questions, then you need to answer the door and, and investigate a matter. Proverbs 25, 2. You need to investigate a matter because he'll say, yes, you were believing my name was Jesus when you were saved from this attempt at taking your own life. However, that is not my name. What, you're, what, you, I, what you understood and experienced was the essence of who I was, but that was not my name. I'm knocking on your door so you can understand this is my name. And once you know my name, there, we can have a closer in, intimacy there can be more strength, there's more power, there's more peace, there's more healing. That's permanent, lasting, eternal. Not this fleeting struggle, struggle after struggle after struggle. But he says right here in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. And you know what's at that dining table? It's, it's, it's the, la the bread and the wine. And that is eternal. And you are not going to be able to get there if you refuse to open the door. Do you love him enough to know his true name? He will reveal it to you if you do. I mean, I looked at all of the different variations. I was so confused. And it is, it's confusing. 
But I'm like, Father, lead me. Tell me where, where, which, which, which one is right. Is it Yahuwah? Is it Yahweh? Is it Yahuwah? I mean, what, I mean, obviously, we all don't know exactly because we're trying to, but the Yahuwah, Yahuwah or Yahuwah, I, I'm still practicing Hebrew. I'm learning Hebrew as quickly as I possibly can. But Yahuwah, spelling it as I do in my posts, that is his name, Yahuwah. And his son is Yahusha, meaning salvation from and through Yahuwah, through his son. It's not difficult once you get there. But you cannot mix God and Yahuwah and Jesus and Yahusha. It doesn't work. And I know in my past videos, you, if you watched any of my past videos, you will have heard where I said Jesus, Yahusha, or Yahush, Yeshua. I used to call him then too. But that was because I was still trying to follow him. And, and he'd tell me, am I hearing you right? Is this right? Am I hearing it quite right? Lead me to the truth, please. I want to get it right. I love you so much. I'm going to get it right. I want to be closer to you. Okay? But most people don't. And this is what I'm going to show you right now. People are like, oh, there's so much division amongst believers. Guess what? He is separating the sheep from the goats and the wheat from the tares right now. Why and how? Through the truth, which are his true names. Okay? His true name and identity. Yahushua HaMashiach. The true name and identity of our creator. Yahuwah Elohim. And this golden ratio, he confirmed it to me yet again this morning when I was talking to another sister who we both bore witness to him so he had two witnesses to try and set him straight in his post but the golden ratio you see how the circle moves forever to the right it moves in a right clockwise direction forever and ever and ever but on the reverse side, if you are judged not worthy and a sinner and a lawbreaker, then you're going to be forever traveling the circle or the um, spiral the opposite direction counterclockwise. And that will put you out further and further and further and further away from Yahuwah, who is in the center. So when you hear what the scripture says he's going to separate the sheep on the right and the goats on the left. Again, another confirmation that the golden ratio is Father's signature, his ways, his perfect law. That's really what it is. So those on the left will be forever getting more and more and more distant from Yahuwah, and those who love him and who are his sheep are on the right hand getting closer and closer and closer to them as long as they're being humble in their spiritual growth and walk with him. The way we find close fellowship with Yahuwah is through the Torah. Your Torah is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 119, 105. Yahuwah, your Torah is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And the purpose of the Torah is to show man how to walk in righteousness, a right relationship with his creator, Yahuwah. And to do this, because Yahuwah's love language is obedience, it is action, which is obedience. To do this, we must love Elohim, Yahuwah Elohim, with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Okay? And yes, we are to love our neighbor as ourself, but the most important part is to know who he is. And the truth is not for everyone. Those who are meant to hear the truth will hear the truth. That is why we hear Yahushua say, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And the taught ones came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answering said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the secrets of the reign of the heavens, but to them it has not been been given there are going to be people who hear the knock and disregard it <clears throat> or they won't know what it means but in order to have a close relationship with him you must seek first the kingdom of Elohim okay the kingdom of Yahuwah Elohim 
If you want to seek the kingdom, you have to know his name. You know, people come to me, well, what about all these other people that believed in God and Jesus? Well, I'm not the judge. Father is. I'm not the judge. And, and, and just because you're trying to find a way to make this work with your own paradigm, the bottom line is if he's knocking on your door with his true name, you might want to open the door and accept it and put down your pride and think that you can just get a free pass. If he gives you this information and has crossed your path, you are no longer, <laughs> you no longer get a free pass. Okay. So this is one of the comments that I left in this individual's video that he put on social media. Because he was talking about, where's the love, guys? We're forgetting love. What is the first commandment, right? And Yahushua, when he gave the, the new commandments in, in uh, John, it wasn't to replace the 10. He was actually summarizing the 10. And he even says so when you go on further down the passage where he says, on these two hang the 10 and all the law and the prophets. Okay, so... So what do you do to show love to Father Yahuwah? You keep his commandments. John 14, 15, okay? That's what Yahushua said. If you love me, keep my commandments. But the first commandment is broken by all Christians, all believers who don't know his name. Why? Because the first commandment is thou shalt have no other gods before me. No other gods before me. If you're calling on God or Jesus or Lord, you're calling on Satan. You're calling on a pagan deity, not the only one, Yahuwah Almighty. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And if you receive this information regarding his true name and it raised questions in your mind, that was Yahuwah knocking on your door, asking you to open to him and let him help you unlearn the lies you were born into. To grow into a closer relationship with him, both in truth and in spirit. Yet you made a public declaration today that you will not open to him. And instead you cling to a false Messiah, a false God, claiming, I will never deny the name Jesus. Yet in the same breath, make a statement saying that, you know, the name of the Jesus is not accurate. So are you going to cling to a name of a false God and Messiah? That you admit to believe is not accurate? I mean, it doesn't make any sense, guys. People think, oh, this God is love, blah, blah, blah. Do they, they don't realize, they don't know who the true creator is then. Yes, he is love. Yes, he gives grace and mercy. He gives grace and mercy to those who love him, honor him, cherish him by keeping his commandments in obedience. Observing his, his um, dietary laws. Um, observing his holy feast days. Those are the ones, those, especially the ones keeping his Sabbaths. Okay? Those are the ones that receive grace and mercy, not people out here that are going to just try to claim ignorance. No. He, if you read the Old Testament, and I hate to use that word, but if you read the front part of the Bible, you will see there is a totally different God there. <laughs> the creator, the true creator is there. Because he says, is not my word like fire. It will burn you if you try to play with it. If you try to hmm ha it. If you try to, you know, no. You don't mess with his word. Is not my word like fire. This is Yahuwah's declaration. This is his declaration. <laughs> and like a hammer that pulverizes rock. He will crush any and all things that are not perfect. He will crush any and all things that are wicked. He will get rid of any who are lukewarm. Those who are in the kingdom are strong. They are not cowards. They are like lions. We raise our voices and we raise the warning in truth and love. And yes, we're bold and yes, we're loud sometimes. But sometimes when you're getting right to the very edge of the cliff, the warning grows much more urgent and much more loud. And I'm going to point this out. When you have eyes to see, this hits totally different. Because if you know anything about words, spelling, words cast spells. Okay? So I saw this on another believer's post when I was going through social media this morning. And that's, this is a person who claims to know what spiritual warfare is. 
but every witchcraft spirit that tried to block your blessings is being destroyed in the name of Jesus. Really? Just casting a spell to, to keep people wrapped up in the delusion and the deception of Jesus. These kind of things only serve to continue to keep people spiritually blind to who Jesus Christ really is, a pagan deity, and keep them away from the true Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach, and the true Creator, which is Yahuwah. They don't know what they don't know because they turn a blind eye and an ear and they don't want to take the time to get to know or seek out a matter. But this is witchcraft. These are Christians. Christians are busy running around casting spells on each other, saying, Jesus, 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 praise Jesus. Praise. Guys, it's, it's all witchcraft. And anytime you keep using his name, if you haven't come out of it and you are strong in your faith, knowing who your Messiah is, Yahushua HaMashiach, the name Jesus has no power over me anymore. None. Absolutely none. But to you, my friends, who are watching this video all the way through to the end, you know exactly what I'm talking about because you've had conversations like these yourself. And I want to tell you one thing. All you can do is warn them. That's all you can do. That's all Father asks you to do is to raise the warning. If they don't listen, you move on so you can warn others. Matthew 10, 12 through 14. Okay? All you can do is warn them. Don't cast pearls before swine. If I, I give them the three strikes you're out rule, might be a reason why we have three strikes you're out. <laughs> I give them three tries to, to engage with that, to actually think about the truth being presented. And then if they're just going to continue to argue and try to prop up and throw Paul in my face, who is a false prophet, they obviously are not going to see the truth. But... We are to learn how to number our days. Isn't this an interesting image that Father just put in my path today? Right? You see the golden ratio. And as we travel along the golden ratio, we draw closer and closer to our almighty creator, Yahuwah, to our Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach, and the Ruach HaKodesh. We will continue to grow closer as we bear fruit and grow in Him. And those who do not will be forever lost and forever forgotten. <laughs>